All right, let's talk a little bit about HH2 Remote Payroll. That's why we're here today. I'm going to take this slide and we'll just go ahead and play it. And we'll go through and in, introduce you to HH2 Cloud Services just very quickly. Um, again, we've, uh, we've been in the cloud and developed this system from the ground up in the cloud. Uh, back in the day when I first started with the company almost 15 years ago, uh, companies were a little bit nervous about the cloud. They thought, oh, this cloud is something where your data is just nebulously uh, up in the, up in the uh, cloud and, and people can grab your information out of nowhere. And that, that's just simply not the case. I think we're all a bit more smarter than that at this point. And really cloud hosted solutions are where a lot of things are going and subscriptions. Um, software as a subscription or service as a subscription uh, or support as a subscription is becoming a very popular thing uh, within the software world itself. So we'll talk a little bit about pricing uh, close to the end, but uh, again, all of our customers that are using our products and services today are in fact in the construction industry in one form or fashion. We have a lot of general contractors, uh, electrical, mechanical, subcontractors, uh, uh, those who are working in concrete, uh, uh, those in residential, uh, developers, uh, home builders, again, you name it, uh, we, we've got a customer using this. And we, we have now today over 3,000 subscriptions to our products and services. Uh, so we're not, you know, some new guy on the block. We've, we've been around for some time. Now, the other great thing about being a fully hosted cloud solution is you can access our software from anywhere. If you're on a laptop or a desktop computer, you'll just simply go to a web browser. Every company has their own unique uh, URL that you will log into and gain access to the software. If your team's in the field or people in the office or whoever is also using a mobile device, we support both Android and iOS or Apple devices as well. Now we build our own native apps that can be used on those devices. Uh, the nice thing about being a native app is the fact that those applications can be used offline. Uh, even if you don't have connectivity, uh, it's going to save that data locally to that device. And then uh, once you come into connectivity, once again, you'll just launch the app on your device and it will upload any information that has been saved that has not previously been uploaded to the web. So again, a nice, some nice things about our applications. We'll show you some of that throughout the presentation today. So just so you're aware. Um, many of you who are showing up for this presentation today are doing so because you've got some time collection issues. Uh, some of you might be doing things by pen and paper. Still the old school, because uh, some of your older uh, guys out on the job sites, they're awesome foremen, superintendents, uh, great employees, but they're just not technology savvy. And so they're still doing it pen and paper. Some of you have graduated to um, Excel spreadsheets, which is great, but uh, the challenge becomes how do I get my job and cost code information on my spreadsheets, et cetera. Um, and, and some of you are either using another third party software um, and that is not uh, connected or does not integrate with your current uh, ERP solution as well. Uh, other issues that companies have, again, is that connectivity. Uh, can it only be used on a laptop or desktop or, or does your current solution offer offline capability as well? So those are some of the common things that people are facing in the industry that HH2 is attempting to solve. So how does HH2 solve the problem and how do we work? Let's begin really with the foundation. As with any construction company, they're really, you start with the foundation. And if you have a bad foundation, um, you know, the rest of the building, doesn't matter what you do with it, um, it's, it's not going to be quite right. So the first thing that we do and focus on is the integration with your ERP solution. Now, once again, we support both uh, Sage 100 contractor Sage 300 CRE, and in the coming months, we will be supporting 
uh, intact uh, with this as well. So what we do is install a synchronization or an integration client on your server that, uh, so that we can start pulling over information. Uh, information from your accounting system, such as we pull over all of your employees, your jobs, extras, phases, cost codes, GLs, certified classes, unions, uh, GLs, all of that information found in your accounting system is going to automatically be uploaded to the cloud. Then you can schedule a scheduled task to run uh, that uh, synchronization as often as you would like. Some people will set it to what we call a continuous sync, wherein every five minutes it's going to upload any new data that you've uh, put into your ERP solution. Some people, one hour is sufficient and other people will do it once a day. So again, you kind of set it and forget it. And then in the background, our system seamlessly pulls information into HH2. And uh, uh, what that means is for individuals or uh, crew managers or people in the office, when they start coding their time, they're choosing jobs, cost codes, extras, GLs, pay IDs that synced over from your accounting system. Now, one of the items that I failed to mention that we also sync over is for those companies that do equipment revenue time, um, we also sync over your pieces of equipment as well, okay? Now, uh, that can go through a customizable approval process, uh, but we have multiple time entry methods, multiple ways to code time, uh, multiple levels of approval that you can set up within HH2. Uh, you can collect units for employees, pieces of equipment, uh, again, multiple pay types like mileage, per diem, sick, vacation, holiday, really any pay type that you've set up in your system will be synchronized over to, uh, um, or, or it can be, can be used within HH2. Now, we also have a host of other products. We'll talk about these a little bit at the end. We may also show a brief demo of our field report solution. We have a product that integrates with Sage service management and service receivables. We have an HR product that integrates seamlessly with Sage 300 CRE. Um, in addition to um, just coding time in our remote payroll, we now have given the ability for your employees to view their pay stubs as part of that product as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we move along. Uh, employees can grab their pay stubs from their mobile device, uh, et cetera. So those are some of the things that we're going to discuss today throughout the presentation. Uh, but I wanted to give you that kind of brief introduction about HH2. So let's jump to the website. And what we will do is we're going to, I'm gonna log out just so you can see what it's like to log in HH2. Um, we may go over this fairly high level today. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact or on one of the uh, marketing channels uh, for Alliance, please know that um, you're welcome to contact us. My contact information will be brought up here at the end, or you can talk to Tim or your uh, consultants there at Alliance about HH2, and we can schedule more of a one-on-one -on -one presentation to really tackle some of your needs. But today, let's just go ahead and I'm gonna do the demonstration this way today. Um, we're gonna go from a form and coding time to a project manager reviewing the time, then to payroll reviewing the time. And then we'll talk a little bit about pushing that data into uh, your various accounting systems. Um, Please know, however, individual employees can code their time, and we'll we'll kind of tackle that a little bit today as well. Uh, but again, we'll keep it somewhat high level so we can kind of make this a shorter presentation today. So if Frank Galloway signs in, uh, off to the left-hand side, these are the modules in HH2 that I have given Frank uh, permission to see and do some things. So remote payroll, 
Uh, that's for gathering the payroll. That's what we'll talk about today. Accounts payable, uh, being able to review my uh, invoices in the system, being able to approve them, job cost them, uh, you know, paperlessly, and then field reports. We'll take a quick look at field reports here as well, and then pay stubs, being able to view those. But we're going to just tap into remote payroll, and we're going to go to the timesheet. We're going to explain a little bit about some of the awesome benefits of HH2 and some of the unique things we do that other third-party time collection systems do not do, okay? So first and foremost, one of the things that uh, we hear very, very often from people either coming from other systems uh, or our current customers, they love this daily time card. One of the reasons they like this daily time card in HH2 is it remembers my job and cost code. So some other solutions, every single day you have to go in, choose the job, choose the cost code, and then code time. Well, in HH2, we remember that job and code. So it may be as easy as, hey, this guy worked eight hours on this, this guy worked eight hours here, and just putting in time entries into pay IDs that I've already preloaded on my time card for that week. Now, if I were to log in tomorrow, on the 23rd, there's the same job and the same cost codes, same employees, etc. Again, it's all very, very simple and it remembers that. So uh, this is ideal for companies that go back to the same job, um, you know, day in, day out and tend to do the same things. Now, let me explain a little bit more about this time card. You, of course, have seen these are my employees across the top. If a new employee showed up today, I have the ability up in the upper right-hand corner to add members to that crew. So if Jose Garcia joined my, um, my uh, job site today, I can grab Jose and add him to my crew, okay? Now, the other thing to note, and I often get this question when doing a presentation, hey, can Jose be a... Uh, uh, part of multiple crews, not only for the day, but for the week. And the quick answer to that is yes, uh, he definitely can be. Um, again, these are the pay types. The other question we have is, can I have more than just regular and overtime? Can I have double time, premium time, uh, vacation, sick and holiday? And the answer is yes. We allow up to six pay types per line item or cost code on a given page. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're limited to six total because the other thing that you can do is come up here to field pay and maybe some of my guys took the day off. So instead of seeing regular and overtime, I want to pull down the sick and vacation pay types if I ever need to use them, okay? All right, so just know that again, you can configure HH2 multiple different ways. Now, if I'm also a company that in addition to the Northwest Food Warehouse also codes time to multiple jobs, down here in the lower left-hand corner, I click on add jobs, go to my job selector. This will show me the jobs that I as a manager have access to. So if I'm running a crew, I might need access to all of the jobs. And if I need to search for a given job and say, hey, I'm gonna to go to job 002, okay? It will show me any job with a 002 in it. Now, as I type in that, you'll notice that it takes me down to the Clackamas Office Park job. And then for those of you who are using extras, sub jobs or phases, depending on your vernacular in your various uh, accounting or your specific accounting system, please know that we support that, okay? So oftentimes you'll find companies that the main job might be a high rise building and every floor becomes its own extra or sub job. And you're trying to get your various costs per floor. So anyway, just know that that is supported. I'm just gonna choose another job for a minute. And then when I pull up the job and the reason we select the job first is because uh, we want to be able to only see those cost codes that have been set up on that job on the budget and those specific codes that are budgeted to labor. Now, one thing to note about that comment, uh, some companies 
say, well, I don't really set up a budget on a job. I just have the job and then we use the standard cost code list. That is something that you can turn on in HH2 by individual group and allow employees to code time to the standard cost code list. Okay, so if on this job, we're also working on wood framing and structural panels, we can highlight those two and add that job in those cost codes. Now, let me go back to that page one more time. As you can see in HH2, and I won't do it today, please know that you can add jobs, cost codes, a GL account, certified class, unions. So if I need to change any of this information from the defaults that, it, that might be on the employee record, please know that you can do that, okay? I won't show it today uh, in the system. Now, that's a little bit about how to add multiple jobs. So if one of my employees here worked three and a half hours on this job doing structural form work, and then spent three and a half hours on this job doing wood framing, and then another hour doing structural panels, I've coded my time now for Frank Galloway for two different jobs and multiple cost codes for the day. Now, we do know that there are, will be some of you who are interested in clocking in and clocking out. Uh, we don't necessarily do that to a job and a cost code today. We have a couple of different ways in which we like to do time, at least at the present time with HH2. Um, uh, in fact, I didn't want to go to the distribution worksheet. I apologize. I wanted to go to the attendance worksheet. And if I want to clock in a crew for the day, I can do that. Um, it uh, calculates the hours, takes out my lunch break, depending on how I've set up HH2. So if I happen to go back to the timesheet, you'll notice there are some time records up here that I have the ability to allocate. Okay, I won't go into much more detail other than just to let you know that's one way of doing it. I'll also clock in on the phone to show you some additional functionality. All right, now that's a daily time card. If I'm also interested in just, maybe I'm an a individual employee like Donald Black, and I'm just required to do my own time card. Well, maybe my time card might look like this, right? And I'm coding my time to multiple jobs. Today I was on this job, uh, you know, and I haven't done time for Friday. Well, maybe on Friday I will do three, one, and two hours down here, okay? So for an individual employee, they can log in as well and do their time. Uh, but that's what it might look like uh, from the web's point of view. All right, with that, let's go ahead and I'm going to mirror my phone. And we'll show you what this looks like on a mobile device as well today, okay? So you should see my phone uh, pop up here. We'll open that up, okay? And um, you'll notice I've got multiple apps and this is not a simulator, this is actually my phone. Uh, you might see some alerts come across, so I apologize for any disruptions. I have put it on just do not disturb, so I'm hoping it works. Uh, I'm going to go to our remote payroll app. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we do have a, a little bit of clock in and out functionality. We're gonna go to the attendance punch clock and today I'm gonna to just clock in as Frank. So that's just me. I have it set to where not only am I grabbing my photo um, while I punch in for the day, but I also have it grabbing my GPS. So I need to make sure, hey, you're not just simply logging in from the McDonald's or as you leave the house today, we wanna make sure you're on the job site. We also have some functionality in regards to uh, geofencing as well. So if I'm punching in, that might be something that I would like to do. I'll show you how things look a little bit later. I'll show you a couple of different ways in which you can do time on the phone. A weekly time card is great if you're an individual employee and you like this particular screen. Uh, here's Ted Dumont. Um, we're just going to kind of refresh his screen here. Uh, Ted already has his hours, eight hours for Thursday that was coded on the web that's already synced over to his phone. Now, maybe Ted's is very simple. You know, we don't need to get too complicated. Uh, we're just going to throw in hours. Say he worked on excavating and backfill for most of the week. He did take a moment and work on structural form work. Uh, we'll say he went back to uh, excavating and backfill that day. 
and maybe he had some overtime. Maybe he had to stick around for a minute to finish the job. So I'm gonna put two hours of overtime on Friday. And another feature we're gonna show you is just tapping on the detail, tapping in the description. And instead of typing, you can see that uh, our product does a great job of doing type to text. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, add that. So we call that a unit description for those companies out there who really need to take some detailed notes or explain why they have overtime. Uh, this can be pushed into the accounting system if you needed to as well, but just, just know that, okay? Um, so we've got a lot of things uh, there to show you. Um, another way of seeing time records. Uh, we could also copy time in that. The daily time card is very similar to what I showed you on the web. But since we're simply working on a mobile phone, um, I just I just flip through my employees up here at the top. So instead of doing Thursday, let's go back to Wednesday and think, hey, I forgot to do my time. Well, of course, we just got through doing Ted's whole week. So it's going to show time for him. But if I want to just blow through my employees, I just use the arrow button and go over there and say, hey, here's Mark Crocker. Well, he worked eight hours yesterday doing structural form work. And on Wednesday, or on then Gary Cooper, Gary Cooper worked four hours on wood framing and four hours on structural uh, form work as well. And Donald Black already had time. So let's go back through. Uh, there's Frank Galloway. You know, maybe Frank was doing two hours, two hours, uh, and four hours, right? So Frank has multiple jobs. So I changed my employees here. I changed my date here. Uh, let's do something as well for maybe another employee just to kind of show you how it works. Uh, let's go to Mark Crocker and let's go to Friday. Let's say that Mark uh, called in sick. So I'm going to change my pay types to uh, paid time off. So now I'm seeing sick vacation and holiday pay. Some of you may be coding that to a job. Some may just be coding it to overhead. So I'm going to show you another feature by going down below, hitting add codes, adding a GL account to my time card, and then saying, hey, I'm gonna take Friday as a vacation day, put in some detail, I really needed a day off. Okay, and I just put that in there. Okay, so that, that's how easy it was for me to code vacation time to Mark Crocker for this week, okay, to a GL account. Now I'm gonna go back to my standard pay types. Again, very simple, easy, elegant to get around. All right, um, so that's how you would be able to code time um, in HH2. Uh, on those two ways, there's also a time entry. I'll show you this uh, particular way to do things, and I'm gonna do a piece of equipment because we didn't do that on the web. I'm gonna go down to equipment time entry. Again, this might be just like an employee, but I'm gonna say we have the case backhoe. I'm gonna hit the plus button up in the upper right-hand corner of my app, choose the days of the week that we use the backhoe, put in eight hours, saying we were on the Northwest Food Warehouse and we were using it for excavating and backfill. I'm gonna hit next and I'm gonna hit finished. And then I'm going to hit this button right here called Add and Reset. And what I just did there is I just coded time for an entire week to a piece of equipment uh, um, uh, to the case backhoe. So as an individual employee, you can use features like that to do your own time, especially if you do a lot of the same things as well. Okay, so that's another feature, equipment revenue. Time. Let's go back to the attendance punch clock and let's just punch Frank out for the day. Now, what this does on Frank's time card, let's take you to Frank's weekly time card for just a minute. So let's choose Frank. And what you'll notice up here is it gives me a total for Frank. He's got 0 0.10 hours for the, for the day. Now it's still red because we actually over allocated the time. But that's okay. If I fully allocated just the 0 0.0.10, then it this would turn green. I won't go through that, just letting you know it's available. Well, while we're here, let's just finish Frank's time for the week. 
uh, we'll just do some time on the other jobs. We'll put eight hours there. So I'm done, right? So just showing you again, how quickly I can do some things uh, on the mobile app. Now, when I'm finished, I can tap the approval screen. You'll notice that um, I've got some time in there uh, for my jobs or for my employees um, for the week. And uh, I, I don't think we did, even though we added Jose Garcia, I don't think we did time. So let's go to, uh, let's go to um, time entry for Jose. And I'm just gonna tap on the plus button. We're just gonna do some time all week long and just show you somewhat like I showed you earlier. We'll say that he was on the Northwest Food Warehouse. Let's say that he was helping us with final cleaning every day. We're not gonna change his classifications or union stuff. So again, I just coded time now for the entire week for Jose Garcia and um, I'm done, okay? So I can go back to my approval screen and now I've got time for Jose. All right, easy enough. We've got a lot of unique things going on. Let's go ahead and just tap approve all, say that we're done. And uh, what I'm really doing there is I'm just notifying people above me in the approval process that uh, my time records are done. Okay, I'm, I'm done doing time. It's now ready for the project manager. Um, while I'm here though, let me show you one other feature. I mentioned that pay stubs were included in remote payroll. So if your employees and you're doing payroll in-house, if your employees want to see their pay stubs, they're going to download my records, go to pay stubs and say, hey, you know what? I'm getting a home loan. They're asking me for my last two months of pay stubs. Right here on my mobile phone, I can download the last four weeks uh, or last eight weeks of pay stubs right here. Actually, there's nine of them for this particular employee. Okay, so I can have them right here. I can tap on the button up at the top. I can email these pay stubs off to whoever I need to. So this is a great solution. Again, we have, last July, we decided to include pay stubs in regards to the um, um, remote payroll product. We just added it as a feature there. Uh, you could also purchase it standalone, but anyway, just FYI. So that's a little bit from my mobile phone. Once again, I'm gonna leave that open for just a moment and I'm gonna go back to the web and let's finish our payroll for the day, uh, for the week. So I'm gonna log out as Frank. I'm gonna log in as the project manager. And as a project manager, we'll just go through here. Project managers review all kinds of things in uh, the system. I'll, I'll take you to a, what we call a labor detail report so the project manager can see things in detail. Well, right now, this project manager is over multiple jobs. He's over the Northwest Food Warehouse, as well as the Clackamas Office Park job. And we're just gonna go to the filter and say, hey, you know what, just show me all time going to the Clackamas Office Park job. That's the only records I wanna see. And then he would show or see any employee that worked on that particular job. And there were only three of them this week, right? And there's the time records for each of them and what they were able to accomplish while they were there. Well, if I didn't have those filters and I just said, hey, you know what, clear all the filters, show me everybody's time on any of my jobs, I could go down here as well. Now I could make changes if I need to. I could, re um, I could reject the time and push it back down for the project manager or the, the superintendent to fix. But I also see a note because if I'm worried about having overtime on my jobs, I can see that uh, Ted Dumont stayed on Friday uh, and the reason why he was a little bit later on the job that day, okay? So we can kind of see some of those things, very high level, uh, but that's great to be able to have another level of approval before time records even go to payroll. So let's go ahead and approve these hours just by clicking the thumbs up and, and just log out as Tom to make this quick. Now let's log in as the payroll admin, Laurie Becker, just so we can kind of do this uh, the full way around. Uh, Laurie goes into the time approval screen, notices, hey, I've got a bunch of employees with either no time in the system. I do have some employees whose time records are at my level because they're red, or excuse me, because they're gold, then they say the word approve. And then I've got one record that says promote, meaning somebody below me has not approved 
these eight hours of vacation? Well, if I'm the one approving it, I can just promote it to my level and bring it as part of Mark Crocker's entire weekly time card. So Mark just worked for a couple of days and then took a day of vacation. The other days of the week, we're not gonna pay him for. Some people have overtime. Now, uh, there are features in which I can come in. Uh, just real quick, we'll go to uh, time record entry. And let's say that uh, even though we don't mind the overtime, they've asked us to change where that overtime goes. So I might drop in here, go in there and say, you know what, he was really doing concrete removal for that overtime. That's where we want to put his time. I can do that and it will change it there. Okay, so just FYI, um, some cool things that you can do before time even gets into your accounting system. Now, while we're here, let's go over the attendance worksheet. Let's just verify the fact that Frank um, was where he should have been when he punched in and pun punched out. Uh, if I want to come in here, I would click on this. And this is where our offices are here on Main Street in Kaysville, Utah. Um, I can see the punch in, and if I wanted to see the punch out, um, you know, I could I could do the same thing and see where I punched out at as well. Okay, so anyway, just uh, showing you um, some of the punch management that's available. Again, you can see the photo of the individual. So if you're into that and that's important for your company, those are features that you can turn on. We don't charge any more for them. But if I've reviewed everybody's time and I'm ready to get it out of our system and into Sage, uh, I just click on the thumbs up at the top of the screen. And then there's a button right here that says export. So today, many of you might be hand keying this stuff into Sage individually and it's taking you multiple hours. Well, with the click of a button, I can export this time and put it into Sage. Now, here's the only difference. Our system looks, feels, and acts the same for Sage 300 and Sage 100. The only difference right now uh, is when you click on export transactions, because Sage 3 or Sage 100 has an API, when I click on this, this will actually automatically push data into the 551 daily time entry screen in Sage 100. For those who are Sage 300, when you click on that, it creates a text file, and you will take this text file that HH2 has just produced for you, open up Sage Payroll, Tools, Import Time, and you'll just import this text file directly into Payroll. Literally five minutes and you're done. And you've uh, just dumped in all of your hours into Payroll. For those of you who are doing certified jobs, certified payroll, this is fantastic for that. Um, for um, those of you who need to change classifications or whatever, we didn't really show that today. I'm happy to do that on a one-on-one -on -one if you have additional questions. But that's really it. That's how simple it is to get HH2's time records out from the field to the home office and into your accounting system. Now, there weren't any questions that came in today. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do take five minutes just real quick if you're not doing a field report or capturing a daily log for your company, let me show you how fast and easy you can do that. I'm gonna go back to my mobile phone and I'm gonna show you a field report from the mobile phone. So I'm gonna tap on that. I'm going to tap on the 22nd. And these are various sections within HH2 that I have the ability to code to uh, or, or keep track of different uh, things on the job site. We'll just do a couple of those for you today. I'm gonna to grab the weather by tapping on the arrow. It just downloads this from weather.com saying, hey, right now at 9.37 a.m., it's 40 degrees and mostly sunny. I could do that multiple times. It's all, since I've already done my payroll, it's listed the employees who showed up on the job and what they did and the number of hours. It also included my equipment time, which was awesome. Now, if I had subcontractors and I'm keeping track of them, I'm actually just going to copy them from the previous day. So it will list those subcontractors. If the Alpha Insulation Company didn't show up today, I can just swipe and hit delete and delete that subcontractor off that list. Okay, now again, just due to the sake of time, 
I could have just hit the plus button and added another sub, what they did for the day, et cetera. Um, materials are for companies that keep track of material deliveries on the site. We don't have a ton of companies that keep track of that, but it's available. Activity, that simply means I'm keeping track of production units. Um, just know, um, I'm gonna try and hit the uh, uh, button and copy over from my previous entries if I've got them, and there was. So we did cement paving. Uh, we're at 35% uh, complete. We had 100 production units. Please know one thing that's great about this system is that we'll actually push my activity or my units complete back into job cost when I finalize this report. So those of you who are uh, people who are keeping track of production units out in the field, this is a wonderful solution for doing that. Events are just that, events that may have happened on the job site, maybe an injury, et cetera. If I wanna keep track of visitors who showed up, I'm gonna do two more today. I'm just gonna grab a journal entry by hitting the plus button. Let's say that today we had a delay. Uh, due to the pouring rains that came through on the job site, we had to stop work for about 30 minutes while everyone took shelter because there was lightning. So maybe we just have a little note. Um, again, I can just pull out my phone. I could be walking around the job site, just taking a note of what took place today. Uh, we can also keep track of safety meetings that were held, and we can also do an attachment. So here I could either select an existing photo on my phone. I can take a photo from my phone. I can do a batch import. So if I'd been walking around the job site and I took 10 photos, I could have batch import them all at once. I'm just gonna take a photo to show you how quick. Um, that's uh, my office there. We're gonna go ahead and use that photo. I'll just type in office and um, I could type in any notes, uh, but we just added a photo to my form. Now, everything below attachments, the, you guys can customize your own type of forms as well. And, uh, you know, do some, uh, capture some unique stuff, but that's simple and easy today. If I needed to send a PDF to someone from the job site, I can create a PDF right from my mobile phone. There's all my information that I just captured today. Tap on the email and uh, email it off to whoever I need to, okay? Very simple and easy. Now, because I had connectivity, of course, this information is automatically syncing to the web. So let's take you back to the website and look, see what it looks like in the office. So again, people in the office can go to field reports, go to the daily log calendar, see any jobs that may have uh, new daily logs on them and say, oh, there's a daily log for the 22nd. Let's take a look at the information. There's my weather people that were on the payroll for that day, my subcontractors, my equipment time, my activities or unit production, my journal entry, and there's my photo. So if I wanna look at several photos out there, um, I can look at the various photos as I need to. Anyway, so that's our field reports product at HH2. Again, less than five minutes, I gathered that. Last but not least, let's take you to the website uh, before I dismiss today and show you my contact information, um, let's go to hh2.com. Please know that you can go here uh, at any time, click on our products. You will see all of the different products and services that we have available on, on HH2. I'm gonna click on remote payroll. I'm gonna get rid of that uh, bot. And we're gonna click on pricing. Now I mentioned that HH2's pricing model is offering software as a service. Uh, HH2 starts out uh, at the very lowest tier right here at $249 a month. Um, that is your first month subscription to HH2 that gets you into the software. There are no other hidden costs or fees. Um, everything that I showed you today was included, included equipment, time entry, employees time entry, you can have unlimited users. You don't have to worry about user licenses or purchasing licenses or seats. Anyone 
can use the system in your company. We also include for that 249, eight hours of implementation and training with one of our implementation specialists here at HH2. Um, it includes the mobile apps. It includes the integration with your ERP solution. Um, again, there's a lot to it. Also, there are no long-term contracts to sign with HH2. It's a simple month to month um, commitment. Now, after the first month, we invoice your company based upon actual the actual number of employees and or pieces of equipment that had time records in there. So if you're a company that has 20 employees and you don't grow and you're, you're always there, you'll always receive at the end of the month an invoice for 249. If you're a company with 150 employees and 50 pieces of equipment, and that month, every employee and every piece of equipment had time, well, that's 200. So you would fall in this category and we would send you an invoice for 719. Well, maybe that's during the summer months and then come, uh, uh, maybe you're somewhat seasonal and maybe in, in uh, the other months you go down and you only have 100 employees with time and 20 pieces of equipment that had time you would get an invoice there at that tier. So the, again, the nice thing about HH2, you, you bill, we invoice you based upon actual usage of the product. A lot of people really like that pricing. Also, again, there's no long-term contract to sign. It's a month-to-month -month subscription that you are free to cancel at any time if you're not satisfied with the software. And now let's go take a look at field reports. Build reports, we're gonna click on not features, we're gonna click on pricing. Go down here to the bottom, and that particular product starts out at $99 a month. It includes three hours of implementation and training. Today, I completed one daily log in the month of April. It counts toward my zero to 100 reports. And again, we just invoice you at the end of each month based upon the total number of new reports that you created that month. So if you have 10 jobs, 20 working days, and every job had a field report in HH2, you may have 200 reports. Well, at the end of that month, we would bill you uh, 135. So we would only charge you another $36 to uh, do 200 field reports, okay? Uh, or another uh, 100 field reports there. Uh, once again, implementation and training is included, no long-term contracts assigned, unlimited users. We never delete your data. You can access and download those uh, daily logs anytime, anywhere you would like. All right.